Hello everybody, welcome to lesson one. Here is your lesson one lowdown. Just kind of a few things that I wanted to point out as we move into the first real lesson of the semester. Now some of you have been asking about where to kind of begin things each week and where to find the reading. Where you'll want to begin is with the start here document. Pretty obvious there, start here. That will give you the outcomes, the instructions, the objectives for each lesson and how it relates to the unit. Now this unit, first unit is thinking about thinking. We'll finish it up this week actually. And the reading for this week is found here in the prepare document. So if you open that up, you might have to have Flash Player installed. Most browsers will have Flash Player installed. So this will pull up here. Um, hopefully that works for you. If you don't, if it doesn't, if you run into problems, let me know. I'll help you get to it another way. But here's the reading for the week. Look at the presentation. Read these three articles uh, by Butler, Plummer, and Calandra. And these will serve as the basis. Well, these readings, as well as the readings we did for last week's lesson, will serve as the basis for the class discussion this week in which I ask about or we'll be thinking about education from an LDS perspective. So you'll start off with at least 300 words and then you'll need to respond to at least three peers throughout the week. You should try and get maybe 100 words per response around there. Um, now remember that three, three responses that's kind of that's the lower limit if you'd like to do more. Feel free that will help us to build the discussion this week as we think about thinking from an edu or think about education from an LDS perspective. And now all these readings they also serve as the basis for your first major assignment, your thinking about thinking essay. If this will open, we can look at that really quick. Which talk in which you will be talking about what it means to be educated to you. You will draw from at least three articles. Now, I'm, I'm not going to limit it just to the articles we've read for this unit. If there is another thinker that has influenced you and your idea of what it means to be educated, feel free to bring their ideas in as well. Just remember that you need to draw from at least three outside sources in this essay. Um, what I kind of envision it looking like is just a your basic five-paragraph essay. You begin with the introduction, which has your thesis statement at the very end. Your thesis statement should be your definition of what it means to you to be educated. Um, for instance, you could say, to be educated means to have this this characteristic, this characteristic, or this characteristic, or something like that. It doesn't have to look like that. It could be just one idea, um, for instance. Whatever you do after you do your thesis and your three body paragraphs, you could do this in three body paragraphs if you're going the five paragraph essay route. The first paragraph you would talk about the ideas of one author. Second paragraph you would talk about the ideas from another author. Third paragraph you talk about the ideas from another author. And they shouldn't just be random ideas pulled from the, the thinking of others, but it should be related again back to your thesis. It should all be in support of your thesis which would again come at the end of your first of your introduction, your first paragraph. And then once you've done that in your conclusion you pull everything together, um, draw some conclusions from what you've said and give us a so what. Why should this matter to me? Give me the so what. And try and answer that question if you can in your you don't have to state it specifically but your conclusion should give us a so what. Why should? Why do your readers need to care about this? Um, because you want to be thinking about audience as you do this as well because your readers matter. Now here it should be at least 500 words long. If you go a little over that's just fine. Just it should be at least 500 words. That's the low end again. And again you should draw from the ideas of at least three other thinkers. They can be again from the articles that we've read for this unit or if there is a again a thinker that has influenced your ideas about education feel free to bring them in as well there's also you'll notice at the end here we have further study if you want to dive into that each week you can look a little further into the ideas we're studying a steady upward course by elder henry b irene and also there is a, an evaluation at the end of each lesson now these evaluations are 
again it says here part of an ongoing course improvement effort the things that you submit here will help to improve the uh, this course for future well in future iterations for future students so feel free to leave your feedback here click start etc move on now for my uh, spiritual thought of the week I'm going to tie this back into words again obviously we're going to try and focus on that throughout the semester actually the gospel vision of language this one your uh, our thought this week comes from elder holland i will leave it right come we'll let it come right from his mouth from a talk he gave in a 2011 i believe general conference um, from his, a talk called the tongue of angels now this comes from the end of this talk and i i, I love what he says here about words and what they can do for us. So I'm going to turn the time over to him, and uh, we'll we'll conclude with that. In his deeply moving final testimony, Nephi calls us to follow the Son of God with full purpose of heart, promising that after ye have received the baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost. Ye can speak with a new tongue, yea, even the tongue of angels. And how could ye speak with the tongue of angels, he says, save it were by the Holy Ghost? Angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost, wherefore they speak the words of Christ. Indeed, Christ was and is the Word, according to John the Beloved full of grace and truth, full of mercy and compassion. So, brothers and sisters, in this long, eternal quest to be more like our Savior, may we try to be perfect men and women in at least this one way now, by offending not in word, or, more positively put, by speaking with a new tongue, the tongue of angels. Our words, like our deeds, should be filled with faith and hope and charity, the three great Christian imperatives so desperately needed in the world today. With such words spoken under the influence of the Spirit, tears can be dried. Hearts can be healed, lives can be elevated, hope can return, confidence can prevail. So, I love what he says there about our words needing faith, hope, and charity. Uh, just to think about that, what it means for responsible language use, and what we're talking about this semester. Um, now, I just wanted to leave you with that. If you have any questions, please do feel free to let me know. Um, I'll be posting, I'll embed a copy of this talk in my notes, so if you want to take a look at that, I highly recommend it. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. My inbox is always open.